Hey y'all. So I am so, so excited to tell you that I am launching a Be Your Own Intuitive membership. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this, except I'll endeavor to tell you right now how excited I am about this. I had had a Be Your Own Intuitive webinar course previously, which provided a lot of the foundation for this membership. However, even though the webinar was really beautiful and wonderful experience, not everybody was able to participate because of time differences and, and work schedules and so on and so forth. So this membership is going to be on-demand videos for you every single week for you to watch when you can on your own time. These are going to be videos teaching you how to access and work with your intuition because as you know, everybody, I believe, everybody is intuitive. It's just about understanding what your tools are, how to access them, how to really work with your intuition in a way where you can be your own guidance system, where you can truly be your own intuitive. And I'm really excited to share all that I know with you in this membership course. I'm gonna be talking about how to read the tarot, what the tarot is all about, how to read it intuitively, how to, again, really develop your own intuition and really hone it into a nicely working muscle group for you. I'm gonna be talking about how I read tarot on YouTube and really just anything and everything that I know about the wild and wonderful world of intuitive development and tarot and everything esoteric. So I am so, oh, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. So I have a link to the waiting list in the description box below this video. Uh, the waiting list is going to serve as holding your place within the membership course uh, unofficially before I you know, do a hard launch pretty soon. So with that, I want the groups to you know, have a source, uh, sort of intimacy, uh, where everyone can bond and connect if they like. And so I'm not going to have membership just open ongoing. I will open and close it sort of in waves. So this is your opportunity to join right as we launch. And I, I'm just so excited to, to be with you on this journey and share with you all that I know. I will also have a monthly Zoom meeting for everybody in the membership where I come on, you can ask me anything you want to. We can talk about all the things. We can talk about your experiences. We can answer really any and all questions you could possibly have. This is also a way for me to connect with you guys on a more personal and intimate basis, which as a teacher, I really love to do. So again, I am so excited to offer this to you. I so hope that you'll join me in this membership. I, I'm just so excited about it and to really pass along all the knowledge that I've acquired onto you so that you can really be your own intuitive and be your own guidance system because that to me is just about the most important thing that there is as a spiritual being having a human experience. So with that being said, the link is in the description box below for the wait list. And I just thank you in advance so much for, for joining me over there. And I'm so excited to connect with you all and be well until next time. Hey Capricorns, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at your first half of November general reading here. So in your meditation, I saw the image of a cartoon spider and specifically it was a spider. I feel like it may even be from a specific cartoon, but I have no idea which one it is. Um, this cartoon spider was moving about. It was a very large spider and it had little booties on its feet, like kind of like, you know, like might be found in like a child's you know, book about a spider wearing little, you know, b booties on its legs in order to, you know, soften, <laughs> I guess, the, the spider for the story is not to scare any children. And, um, but I saw this, you know, cartoon spider moving forward. And then I saw it move into, it was like the set of the Matrix films where suddenly like the cartoon aspect was just gone and it was an actual spider and it was black and sleek and it very much looked like, you know, patent leather-esque as in, you know, like the Matrix films, like, you know, what they wore in the Matrix. And then I saw, you know, a lot of, when I think about the Matrix, one of the more famous scenes, you know, from those films is when, you know, the, the bullets are coming at them and the way that they dodge the bullets. And it's all about how to, you know, move against or with the energy that's coming at you. Right. Interestingly enough. 
So then I saw all of this, you know, energy coming towards the spider. And then I saw this web and I saw the web catching all of this energy coming towards it. And then I saw the web sort of hold on to it all. And then it started to turn and it turned into the wheel of fortune. Really, really fascinating. Um, I get this very, uh, very, very keen sense that there's a lot coming towards you uh, during this time. I, I don't want to say coming at you. It doesn't feel like it's coming at you. I feel like it's coming towards you. The thing is, when we manifest, we you know, when we are attracting, we're at a point of attraction, we don't just attract the great stuff or the not great stuff. It's both. It's all of it, right? It's like there's a lot coming towards you and, and you know, you are keeping it within the web and it's informing, you know, events moving forward. But it feels like you are a bit of, or not just a bit of, but an actual magnet uh, during this time, a magnet for opportunity, for ideas, for choices, I'm hearing, a magnet for choices, right? Because it, it, sometimes you could even say that true wealth is, is having choices. And the less choice you have, the less wealthy you are. Not monetarily speaking, but in terms of like, you know, the richness of life, you know, like choices is freedom, right? Choice equals freedom. So there's something in that for you. You know, spider medicine, spider energy, you know, it's a bit of a hybrid. It's 10 of pentacles energy and the fact that it speaks of, you know, the stories that, you know, we learned, the legacy that we leave behind, all woven within our cosmic web of cause and effect and, and change and universal consciousness. And then it's also a high priestess energy, right? Which is about connecting in with your intuition and really discerning the way forward in a way that only you have access to in terms of visibility, right? So only you know what's right for you, in other words. So it feels like there's a lot going on for you, <laughs> Capricorn, but it feels, it feels incredibly exciting. It feels really good. It feels like, you know, you're in a place where you are able to work with everything that's going on and really construct it within your web in a way that says like, this is, this is good for me right now. I'm going to delegate this for later. I'm going to say no to that so I can say yes to this. And it feels like you're just really deeply seated into, it feels like a bit of a king of wands. Um, King of Wands slash, I would say, Queen of Swords, uh, a hybrid power here. It feels incredibly exciting. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see what your cards say. Hey, Capricorns, let's go ahead and see what your animal energy is for the first half of November. Ah, oh, ha, 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 ha. Ooh, tarantula on the bottom. Interesting. Okay. So fire ant, <laughs> really interesting. You know what I'm seeing with this? Remember I saw the uh, the spider web and all this stuff coming towards it, right? And then I saw it getting caught in the web and then it turning into the wheel of fortune that started turning. Really, really interesting. Look at all of these ants being drawn to this central source here. <laughs> Very fascinating. So fire ant, you know, this equates to that of the five of wands in the tarot. So the wands are about what connects us to our soul purpose. It's about the work that we do. It's about the relationships about which we're very passionate. They keep us alive and motivated and inspired, especially the relationship that, you know, we have to what we do as it aligns with our purpose, right? Because when we're deeply seated in our purpose and we're taking action around it, living it, that's the kind of energy and the benefit that we get from, you know, being in that wands energy. So five of wands, you know, five is the number of change. Five of wands is very much about conflict. It's about opposing sides, bit of a duel going in here. You know, there can be some friction, some differing of opinions. It, this can also be an internal sense of, you know, angst or, or tension or anxiety, but it's interesting here. Because with ever, all of these black ants being drawn to the central source, and then I saw the spider turn from the cartoon into the black spider, and then we have it in this context here. Remember when I said when you are at a point of attraction vibrationally, you're going to attract towards you the good and the bad. <laughs> it's going to be everything. I feel like there's a sense of this coming through with the fire ant. But I also feel like there's an aspect of this as well that speaks to the collective, to a greater vision, because ant energy is very much about teamwork and coming together to serve, you know, greater good, which is in really beautiful alignment, it must be said, with Capricorn energy, right? 
you guys absolutely excel at, at you know getting a team to operate where everyone is on the same page. I feel like that's coming through for you here as well. Let's see what's going on. Right. Two of Wands, more Wands energy. <laughs> so Two of Wands, it's, it's interesting because this is the foundation, right? Two of Wands is when we're working on something, when we're building something, when we're getting the details down, that we're dotting the I's, we're crossing the T's, we're making sure that everything is where it needs to be and every contingency plan possibility is accounted for and considered, right? So it's interesting here, I'm really drawn to the fact that we have two pairs of two here as well. I just feel like you're a part of um, either a team, this could be your family that you consider a team, that you are doing this work for or for the greater service of. Something to do with like a team or a family unit or a partnership, could even be a work partnership as well. Um, that really feels like it's at the heart of your experience during the first half of the month. You know, lion energy as well, I, I, I'm really drawn to this, you know, I think they're gazelles back here. And I'm really drawn to the fact that these lions are not going after the gazelles when they very easily could. And there's this little red bird sort of chirping away on this lion here, telling him when to move, when to be still. It's not the time to go for those gazelles, right? It feels like there's a sense of an inner metronome happening here in terms of your eyes are very much on the prize <laughs> is what it feels like, right? But I like this. This feels like a stabilizing energy and counter to the five of wands as seen in the fire amp because it feels like, okay, life, there's a lot going on. Life is definitely happening. There's a lot of, you know, pots on the stove as it were, but there's a very stabilizing grounding influence you have in terms of your foundation. This could absolutely be related to your work, but I feel like it's also a foundation of your relationships that are coming in to inform this energy, which is really nice. Cause that's, that's the truth. Like if you have a good foundation at home and you have a safe space at home, then you feel like you can go out there and the world can get its hands on you, but it's okay. Cause you know, you're going home to a safe space, right? Oh, four of wands, the key of the safe space. I love this. So many wands. So four of wands is about happy home, happy family, celebration. It's cause for joy. We have these two magpies here, as, as the saying goes, two for joy. So it's really interesting, right? Because we have the moon here. We have the two magpies. We have the four of wands with the two of wands and then the five of wands. It's really interesting how this is coming through, but ultimately it does feel like it's a time of high purpose, <laughs> high purpose, high action, um, a lot of energy going on. It's fascinating too as well, because I, I feel like this path here, right? I feel like there are these little eyes. If you can see that little eyes that are forming the path and the little firefly there. And then we have this partnership here, these two, right? That feels really strong coming in for you. Again, th this is really beautiful. I feel like there's a lot going on, right? There could be, you know, it's, <laughs> I don't know why I'm hearing this quote, but it's like, that's like more money, more problems. But it, but it really feels like once there's more on your plate, once you're manifesting, you know, more of what you've been working towards, there, there is, you know, but the things that are going to arise that are going to need your attention. You're going to be, you know, having to split up your time differently, sort of retrain where your focus goes. It feels like things are very much shifting towards you. It feels like you are very much handling it though. It feels handled because look at this. We have the fire and energy with the spinning wheel of fortune here to everything you're attracting, right? And then we have a strong foundation, planning, working on something, building something with the two wands. Then you have the four of wands, which is about celebrating and, and being so happy and joyful for exactly where you are to the point where it almost, it's like the path will inform itself because it, it doesn't necessarily matter. When we are really connected to our purpose and we are moving from that place of you know manifesting and, and taking inspired action, suddenly what is going to happen down the road becomes less important. We can consider it. We can think about it with that 10 of pentacles influence as is the spider energy and the high priestess, but it doesn't become something that we lend our mind or energy to in the same way as when, you know, for example, things are not going our way. And then we start to have, you know, anxiety or really thinking about the future because it doesn't feel great to be in the present, but for you, it feels great to be in the present. It feels really nice. It feels really, really nice. Ooh. Wow. 
Eight of Cups. Fascinating. So I, I like this for you because I feel like it's cooling it down a bit. <laughs> you have a lot of fire wands energy here. And then you have the Ace of Cups. It's like, ooh, let's have a, a nice drink of water. So Eight of Cups, this is about, you know, emotional freedom. It's about emotional feel goods. It's about emotional equilibrium. It's about allowing yourself to exist in a place and in a way that feels like you're not compromising your needs, your emotional wellness in any way. That's why we say with this key, this is that, you know, walking away from emotionally unfulfilling situations, belief systems, patterns, habits, all of that, right? You're literally standing on the bones of all the lessons that you've learned to get here. And all that's left for you to do is to really be fully seated in the fact that, you know, what has been, you don't necessarily need to carry on into what will be. And it's, it's interesting because after the Eight of Cups is the Nine of Cups. That's the wish fulfillment. But isn't it fascinating that in order to get to the Nine of Cups and the wish fulfillment, we first have to leave some things behind? You know what I'm getting with this? It's it's a funny example, but you know how um, there's there's records of this, of there are people who win the lottery, and there are people that you know are have not had much money or you know financial freedom in their lives, and suddenly they win the lottery and they end up blowing through all the money and they end up in the same position they were in in like no time at all. It's interesting how that's coming up for you because I feel like there's something tied to, you know, how you view, you know, when when things are happening, your finances, your sense of comfort and stability and security, right? I feel like that's really coming through for you. I feel like there's a risk. There's a risk coming up and it feels like a, like a, remember, risk is like neither good nor bad. It's just like without risk, there's no reward, but you got to take a calculated risk and all of that. But I feel like there's a risk coming up for you in some way with this eight of cups where you're going to have a choice to make between following the path that you've always followed and probably, you know, getting the same things as you've always got or doing something differently, going on an unknown path, one that is less certain in some way. Or might require some sort of um, change for you that feels a bit unknown or very unknown. The choice, of course, is going to be up to you, but it, it does feel like this is really coming through in a way that it feels a bit exciting. And you're really being called to, because the, the tiger is, is divine feminine energy. It equates to that of the moon. We were already feeling that high priestess. You're really being called to, you know, feel your way through what is best. And I mean that feel your way through what is best, but it feels like there's a, it feels like there's a risk. There's an opportunity that is wrapped in a risk or a risk that is also an opportunity <laughs> is coming up for you here. And it feels like, you know, you're really, really thinking you're considering it, right? It's interesting, but it is going to require some sort of change. You leaving something behind you being willing to be maybe apart from your home system for a while, whatever this is, it's going to require something of you. It doesn't feel like a, like a full fledged sacrifice, so to speak, but it is going to require you to come up out of your comfort zone in some way, shape or form, but it, it, it it feels quite good. It feels quite exciting. The potential of what's on the other side of that, right? Let's get some advice. Let's get some advice for Cap. Oh, oh my. I love it when the fool is your advice. I just, I love it so much. So the fool, this is about taking chances, taking a leap of faith, brand new beginnings, having an optimistic, you know, outlook really expecting good things and believing that all you have to do is be brave and be willing and everything is going to work out for you as it's meant to. Fascinating that we're talking about a risk or a, or a potential opportunity coming up that may feel a bit risky. And then your advice is the fool to go for it, to take a leap of faith, but to look before you leap, right? Take that, make it a calculated risk, but really consider in what ways, you know, you really think about the aspect of, if you keep doing, if you keep staying in a safe comfort zone, you're probably going to, you know, maintain 
at the level that you have been at previously, right? But if you are willing to do something a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit frightening or a little bit unknown or whatever this is, there could be a huge other whole world of potential and newness on the other side of it, right? I gotta say, especially with the fire ant, it is more important now than ever to really listen to your voice and what you know to be true. I feel like they're gonna be different opinions or different um, other opinions, but also people who have different, you know, vested interests than you do. So just, 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 just be mindful of this, okay? Because again, it feels like you're the, the sugar pot here and you're attracting a lot towards you right now. But it, you know what to do, Capricorn. You know in your bones and in your soul what is right for you to do. And it feels like, again, it feels like you have a really nice home foundation here. So you can take these risks and have it be, be all right because you have that safe place, you know, within which to land either way. It feels really nice. And that's what life is about, right? Let's get an oracle. I have this new Oracle deck from a dear friend and client. I, I love it so much. Oh, <gasps> stop. I just got chivies, Capricorn. Oh my Lord. I trust myself. We were just talking about that. I trust myself. Confidence and self-assurance. Moose and heart chakra. Hello and goodbye. Always listen to your heart. That feels so, so good. It feels so, so good for you. And that's, that's beautifully said. Confidence, self-assurance. That is very much the full energy. I trust myself. We were just talking about how you absolutely know what to do. So just really lean into that energy. I'm also really drawn to the fact that these are all the lower chakras here with the red and the orange and the yellow. And then we have the heart chakra, which is you know really coming up for you here in this way, the last oracle. And it really feels outside of everything, outside of every, which is eight of cups as well with the water and the feeling and the emotion. You know, outside of every, you know, analysis, paralysis or opinion or, you know, whatever have you, the heart really never lies. It is always there to inform you. It's just about, you know, connecting with it consciously and then actually listening to it and trusting it, right? But this is really beautiful, Capricorn. You absolutely have this. I'm excited for you to see what, to see what comes through for you. With that being said, thank you so much for being here. I so hope that this helps and resonates. If so, please let me know in the comments below. I would so appreciate that. I made a video recently about, you know, something wacky is going on with the algorithm in this channel. People are getting mass and subscribed. Um, so please interact with this video. If you would like to stay subscribed, <laughs> leave a comment. That is the best way for YouTube to register that you don't want to be unsubscribed. I would really appreciate that. So again, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And again, I am so excited to be starting this Be Your Own Intuitive membership. The sign up is in the description box below. I would love, love, love to see you over there. And just thank you. Thank you again so much for being here. And most of all, and as always, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.